The Marvel Cinematic Universe has long been an undeniable juggernaut of pop culture. Its films have continuously dominated the blockbuster landscape and redefined how the general audience engages with comic book films. Like all things, it had to start somewhere, and looking back ten years later, there is one movie that still stands out in the way it created something new and groundbreaking for the medium. A film that helped change the game, that set the tone for its contemporaries moving forwards, and would directly lead towards one of the biggest film events that pop culture has ever seen. Directed by Anthony and Joe Russo, Captain America The Winter Soldier was released in 2014 and immediately proved itself as an integral and pivotal moment for the future of the series. While Joss Whedon's The Avengers in 2012 was something special in its own right, a cinematic crossover on a previously unseen scale, it was The Winter Soldier that felt like it was the first to really surprise and exceed expectations. So what is it that still makes The Winter Soldier such a vital film in a franchise that is dozens of projects deep? And how did it blend tone and genre to set a blueprint for the series to come? and sow some of the most important seeds for the endgame. Expect plenty of spoilers for the MCU to follow. Something that quickly became key to the overall success of the MCU was in blending its superhero trappings with different genres, rather than just action blockbuster. From the higher fantasy of the Thor films, the low stakes heist capers of Ant-Man, or the cosmic space opera of Guardians of the Galaxy. The Winter Soldier may not have been the first Marvel film to play a bit with genre, with even the first Captain America evoking aspects of a period war film but it did so in a way that resonated across the rest of the franchise to come. Where Thor, for example, was as much fantasy as superhero, there isn't exactly a huge distinction between the two genres, both following gifted heroes on an epic quest to save the day. Captain America The First Avenger is still heavily wrapped in its comic book trappings. It has a classic superhero origin story, a colour-coded, prosthetics-adorned supervillain with a cool name, and masked henchmen so obviously evil in all-black get-up. But the 2014 sequel by the Russo Brothers places Steve Rogers in a genre that was distinctly unsuperhero that of a 70s inspired political thriller. Where the first Avenger had the otherworldly Tesseracts and just straight up Nazis were capped to punch, the Winter Soldier instead has the threat of preventative authority from our hero's own government. We're gonna neutralize a lot of threats before they even happen. That the punishment usually came after the crime. We can't afford to wait that long. And a less obvious villain in Alexander Pierce, played by Robert Redford, famously of the conspiratorial All the President's Men. This casting is a direct homage to the other films that openly inspired The Winter Soldier, including The Manchurian Candidate, The China Syndrome, Marathon Man, or Three Days of the Condor. It chooses to present a more modern threat for the modern day, not dealing with magic, but with an algorithm, not with aliens, but with a government conspiracy. It's a completely different situation to throw a character so obviously comic book like Captain America, a man who literally dresses like a flag, and it's a big part of why this is the film that really finds a way to centre the MCU as a whole and arguably establish a baseline for the franchise in a more potent way than the Avengers ended up doing. It presents a much more engaging conflict for a character like Steve Rogers, a man out of time both in universe and as a character. Captain America was originally first published all the way back in 1940, when the world was at war and characters like Superman, Wonder Woman and Captain Marvel provided people with their much needed fantastical escapism, in what is now known as the golden age of comic books. Cap's ideals have always naturally lined up with those at the time, very much standing for the whole truth, justice, American way. By putting a character like Captain America in the modern day, you get the chance to examine how the wartime values of the 1940s hold up now, in the face of a technologically developed world, one where information and influence are key, where the traditional might of an army is nothing in the face of a boardroom of suits. It also holds true to Cap's original intentions as a character, famously punching Adolf Hitler on the front cover of Captain America Comics No. 1, as co-creator Joe Simon considered Hitler to be the best villain of them all, hated by everyone in the free world. Cap was to be a superhero fighting against a real villain, rather than a fictional supervillain, even if he faced off a Red Skull more than the actual Hitler himself. The Winter Soldier may not have a Hitler for Steve to deck, but the modern threat of an insidious surveillance state is a great way for him to have to confront where he stands now, whether the government and American way still represent what he believes in. The price of freedom is high, and always has been. And it's a price I'm willing to pay. And if I'm the only one, then so be it. In the post-Dark Knight era of comic book adaptations, when audiences had rejected more campier superhero films and embraced the more grounded takes like Christopher Nolan's, finding the right balance between the grounded and the camp had become vital. Where 2012's The Avengers pops like a classic comic book, with colours and costumes and set pieces that leap from the page to the screen, the Russo-directed films would integrate the colours and the costumes more into the aesthetic of the world around them. Cap is no longer just a spectacle among spectacles, He's a part of the world now, 
He works with S.H.I.E.L.D., has an apartment. You can pass him on a jog or in the hallway. Don't say it! Don't you say it! Left. Come on! His costume takes on a more muted, military-esque practicality, as compared to the bold red, white and blue of his Golden Age outfit. As opposed to the sci-fi energy rifles of the Nazis, the stakes are much more relatively restrained, and the action kept much closer within the bounds of physical limitation, kept literally closer to the ground. The most memorable set piece of the film isn't a bombastic CGI spectacle, but a more desperate, violent brawl on the side of the road, Steve and Natasha pulling out every trick in their book just to stay alive. It's the kind of action that doesn't invite you to sit back and watch from afar, it grabs you by the arm and drags you along with it. We just went to all of the great influences on us and we'd show them to the crew and talk about, you know, how do we get this feeling like the bank heist in Heat? We want that camera work and that energy. At the same time, through characters like Nick Fury and Black Widow, super spies with seemingly endless, ever-appropriate gadgets for the occasion, it leans into a vaguely James Bond-esque feel, giving us that heightened reality that doesn't stray too unbelievably far into science fiction territory. Fury and Natasha feel right at home here, like they exist in a world that's only just beyond our own, and help ground Steve's more fantastical elements. It also managed to find a way to make more outlandish characters like Batroc the Leaper or Armin Zola work on screen in a way that keeps their original spirit alive, without compromising the loose rules that try to keep this world roughly aligned with our own. In an interview with Slash Film, Joe Russo specifically referred to the challenge of Zola's appearance. It's just cause the movie, up till that point, is an extremely grounded political thriller and then suddenly it becomes a science fiction movie. So it's a hard shift in tone and you gotta make sure you don't lose the audience. So we always knew that would be a tough scene. Where previous villains had been played as more or less exactly that, as supervillains with an obvious vendetta or reason to kill our superhero of the day. What the Winter Soldier did differently was in how it handled the stakes and threat the antagonist posed. From Redford's for the greater good motivation, Rumlow's camaraderie in the field, the entirety of Bucky's trauma-laden identity as the Winter Soldier, every antagonist is also someone Steve Rogers has every reason to believe wouldn't be an enemy. It forces him to ask questions of the situation and of himself. The elevator sequence is really a turning point for the MCU up to that point. Captain America makes a discovery about the good guys and the bad guys that sort of flips everything on its head, and I think that the universe becomes a lot more tonally and morally grey in terms of thematics. Before we get started, does anyone want to get out? Though comparatively small scale compared to some of the greater stakes films surrounding it, the events of the Winter Soldier are, as put by Anthony Russo, the sort of ignition point for Civil War, and the breaking up of the Avengers, and that of course set the stage for Infinity War. Now the Avengers' greatest threat comes to visit them in Thanos and they're no longer united, they're no longer a team. The Winter Soldier is able to extend its influence by feeling the most like part of the official Avengers series out of the solo films, the closest to a direct sequel to the Avengers itself. The Avengers was the proof of concept that a cinematic crossover could succeed, where the crossover elements themselves were still a novelty and a spectacle but The Winter Soldier was the first film to really follow up on that specific premise, since Iron Man and Thor primarily spent their initial follow-up films with their own original cast in more familiar settings. Alongside Steve, the film picks up characters like Black Widow and Nick Fury, who previously existed primarily to set up the crossover, and directly deals with S.H.I.E.L.D., which of course is a big part of the background fabric of the Avengers. It pushed Natasha, Fury and S.H.I.E.L.D. stories forwards in a way that the other solo films didn't, and the fall of S.H.I.E.L.D. is the kind of twist that ends up affecting the universe as a whole, much more so than any of the events in the other solo films of the phase. Even beyond Bucky's presence as the instigating factor of Civil War, it's the challenging of Cap's principles in The Winter Soldier that sets up the actual ideological division of the Avengers, and that even makes Infinity War and Endgame possible. Because Cap's trust in the authoritative figures has been shaken, the Avengers have become forced to stand on their own for better or for worse, and the consequences are further reaching than just one movie. And as much as Black Widow's solo film came far, far too late, her use in The Winter Soldier set a strong baseline for how to handle a shared universe more consistently, with a mini crossover versus only aiming for the big team up. Natasha and Fury aren't in The Winter Soldier just to set up the next big event like they and Hawkeye were pre-Avengers, Natasha especially has actual development and narrative importance in the film, the true deuteragonist of the project. You could easily have called the film Captain America and Black Widow, The Winter Soldier, and it wouldn't feel inappropriate to the content, just a bit wordy. Going forwards, allowing two heroes to share the spotlight often went a long way to making the universe as a whole feel more cohesive and synergetic, like Thor and Hulk's team up in Ragnarok, Spider-Man and Iron Man's dynamic in Spider-Man Homecoming, both Doctor Strange and Wong's cameos in Ragnarok, No Way Home, She-Hulk or Shang-Chi, or the Marvels in the Marvels. It's not the only influential film in Marvel's roster, 
But the Winter Soldier has such a strong, clear, and absolutely vital place in the story of the MCU becoming what it did at its height. It was able to set a tone and a visual cinematic style for the series as a whole, opening the doors for other projects to get creative with IP they were adapting, going further with genre beyond just fantasy or sci-fi. As much as Whedon's The Avengers was a big deal for what it was, and proved that this could work as a cinematic experience, The Winter Soldier took what had been set up by its predecessors and pushed it all forward in a direction that would define the rest of the Infinity Saga, and arguably even make it possible, considering the Russo brothers would ultimately end up directing the two-part finale themselves. It's why, even ten years later, Captain America The Winter Soldier remains one of the most rewatchable, entertaining films Marvel has ever put out. It works on its own as a tense, ideologically based political thriller, or as part of the overarching whole, vital in driving the universe where it needed to go. Thanks for watching. Do you agree that The Winter Soldier still holds up 10 years later, or is there another film you think deserves just as much attention? Comment down below what you think, and please consider hitting those like and subscribe buttons if you want to keep up to date with what we're talking about next. We've got some big changes coming here, and we can't wait for you to see them. Thanks again, and see you later.